What's going on everyone? Pugs with Dungeon Reloading coming to you live from Baltimore, my standard shop. It's been a little while, my apologies, but today I want to talk to you guys about what is hydroforming? How does hydroforming work? Um, does it work for every cartridge? Does it work for you? So why don't we take a look and see what you know Dungeon Reloading has been up to the last two months and uh, we'll see if we can answer some of those questions. a piece of 7.62 by 39 brass it is ppu we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the head stamp see if it'll get it to focus there we go in and out in and out there you go we can see 30 cal well, 0.311 diameter a little bit of a crushed neck but that's an easy peasy fix set that there for comparison now here ladies and gents is also a piece of 7.62 by 39 PPU brass, except it doesn't have the same shape, diameter, or anything of the 7.62 by 39. I'll put these bad boys side by side and show them to you. There is a significant difference here between them. The one on the left is guaranteed once fired, 7.60 by 39 PPU. The one on the right is still once fired, 7.60 by 39. But we have hydroformed it to 6.5 Grendel, or Grendel, or however you'd like to say it. And what we've done is, instead of you know, doing the cream of wheat method, sizing it and firing it to get the case fire formed, we've ordered a die from Hornady. Hornady has made a 6.5 Grendel kit hydroform for me. There's my name. Ha ha. So with that being said, I'll show you what comes in the kit and how we went from one piece of brass to the next. So the Hydroform kit from Hornady, it's a custom item. You can't just go to their website and buy it. You actually need to send them reamer dimensions, caliber dimensions, uh, SAMI specification. Uh, this took about three months, tw around 12 weeks for them to manufacture, test, and send to me. Uh, the 6.5 Grendel Hydroform kit it was designed specifically for me. There's my code, which is all cool and fantastic. It had a pamphlet slash like instructions inside that told you how to use it. Here we have the Hydro Ram. This is the Ram that goes in the top. We have the Hydroform die. It says Hydroform die on it. It's pretty cool. Lock ring, as well as we had an Allen key. The Allen key will go ahead and adjust the collar or it'll adjust the most important part, the shell holder. Now the shell holder, I have installed already on the press. I didn't want to change anything on it. But one of the things you'll notice about the shell holder is there's no hole in the bottom of the shell. That's because when we go ahead and fill the case up with water or alcohol and we slide the case on and are going to go ahead and hydroform it, it prevents the primer from coming out. That allows it what keeps the pressure inside of the case. If you didn't have one of these, say... You had a shell holder like so that had a hole, you would actually blow the primer out the bottom. So that is a very important thing to have is a shell holder that does not have a hole in the bottom to help keep the pressure in when we go to hydroform these dies or uh, hydroform these, this brass. So what we've done is we've already gone ahead and put the shell holder on. Now I'm going to install the, the uh, die body into the case now like i said i have been fighting this it's one thing i've noticed i have been i finally found a use for hornady one shot it does well when it comes to lubricating and keeping this die from rusting but it's not perfect so we're working on that i have this all preset you know we've got the rammer up the rammer cams out at the top we're good to go and then what we do is we take the plunger get it set up in there as well now over here to the left i've got a little assembly line started of how I have been doing stuff for this video. And first up, we'll go ahead and remove one of these cases from here. You'll notice that they all have, I am using water. It seemed that water seemed to work much better than alcohol. Alcohol, if you're not careful, um, you know, you got some cuts or something like that on you, well, it kind of hurts a little bit. So let's go ahead and get one of these set up and on the press. So we're gonna grab one. And move it over to the press. Now these cases are all lubed. We've pre-lubed them using a lube pad, which 
I recommend the RCBS Lube Pad. This one I've had for probably about seven, eight years. It's not shown too much, too many signs of use, but I promise you we use it an awful lot. We have the case there, and what's gonna happen now is we're gonna go ahead and slowly push it up into the die. We're making sure that the die and the shell holder have met perfectly, and the little plunger has come up. So now that the plunger's come up, you can see it's a little bit spongy. It's fine, there's a little bit of water pressure in there. So what we do now is, is with that all the way down, we're gonna go ahead and tap it with either dead blow or a wooden or a rubber mallet. Just a couple times, two, three times, usually all you need. And then when we remove the brass, the brass has been hydroformed. It is now completely as if it had been fired, but without all the heat and pressure and the stuff that can kind of make the brass weak. Go ahead and turn it all the way around. You guys can see nice, solid, even neck and shoulder there. Next up, we remove it from here. Excess water we put in here. And I'll show you what we do with this bad boy next. All right, so we've got our piece of brass that we started hydroforming. And I have a Frankfurt Arsenal Universal Decapper. Um, in my basement, we have like five of these. These things are priceless. If you don't have one, highly recommend you getting one. We'll go ahead on here. We will get rid of the primer. I have a little bin underneath my bench. I put all the primers. And now I want to talk about the primer pocket. Now the primer pocket here, it is a large primer pocket. Not much of the 7.62 by 3.9 brass is small primer pocket like the traditional uh, Grendel is. But in all our testing that we've done, we've been using the CCIs, the CCI uh, military ones. I think it's CCI 41, um, Winchester, um, Seller and Bellet. Fioki, uh, Federal, and there's one more we try, but we've, my beta testers, uh, here within the red eye community, uh, red eye community and the dungeon community, uh, they did a lot of work with me on this. Um, and everything seems to pan out well. So once we get it deprimed, now we go ahead and we run it through a sizing die just to make sure all things are perfect. So I'll show you how we do that now. I have uh, a Dylan XL 650 that is set up and it is set up with the 65 Grendel uh, conversion kit. So instead of, you know, I'm not doing many at a time, I went ahead and just put one in the shell plate at this point. What I have up top though, is I have a Hornady 6.5 Grendel full length sizing die. Now the kit doesn't say you specifically need this. And I'd say 90% of the time you don't, but just as a precaution, because I don't, I don't want to at like any point in time during my reloading process, I don't want to like get to a point where I hadn't checked it in a case gauge, but uh, in the end, this just ensures that the die is fully formed right down to the base, the neck and shoulder is formed properly. So what we'll do next is we'll go ahead and run this into the die, all the way down and up, and when it comes around, all right, so we flip the camera around, and we have the piece of brass, you can see the, now that the base, the size, it goes just about all the way down. And we have a L.E. Wilson case gauge. The L.E. Wilson case gauge, we'll go ahead and determine for us, is this a good or a bad case? As you guys can see, nice and perfect. Now, the other thing we run into is, what's the trim length? This particular piece, as you guys can see, is just a smidge long. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and size and decamphor. This here is a Frankfurt Arsenal uh, Platinum Prep Case Trimming Machine. Uh, this is one of the older models. It has the older plastic gears before they upgraded it, so it's going to sound a little loud. But what I've already done is I've already set my depth, because I've been working on this project so long, set my depth to trim this to the factory case uh, length. And if you don't know what the factory case length is, I'm going to show you how. So I have the Hornady manual. I've been using Hornady products, so I just figured keeping it simple, you know, Hornady die, Hornady case gate, or uh, Hornady sizing die, Hornady hydroform die, Hornady shell plate. Might as well stay with Hornady, right? I've got about 15 other books behind me, but just for a reference, I'm staying with Hornady. This happens to be the ninth edition because I don't have my 10th edition yet working on it. On page 285, it says, that the Grendel max length, open this for everybody to see, the max length is listed here. 
These are all your different dimensions. This bottom one here is the max trim length. Now, I don't know if the camera picked it up. So 1.516 is the max case length for this cartridge. So now we're going to get out a set of calipers. We're going to measure and see where it is. So as per the book, 189th edition, it says that we should trim this brass to 1.516 inches. And according to our gauge, we are at 1.520. So we're about four thousandths of an inch too much. It means we got to take it over and trim it up. All right, so we're back over here at the trimmer. I'm going to turn on. It's going to be loud. But then we're going to go ahead and set this up and measure it. We can hear that the blade caught it, so it's nice. It only confirms that it was correctly long, according to our measurement. And it puts this nice, round, flat edge on it, which is not good. We don't like that. We don't want that. We try to seat a bullet in there. That's not going to work for us. So we're going to inner and outer decamfer it. So outer decamfer it, I give it about one or two seconds. And inner, one or two seconds. And that should be all we need. To have a nice, clean looking rim. I don't know if the camera will focus on that, but I'll get a better picture of it here soon. And now we need to measure it. According to our measurement, we are at 1.514. So it's a little short, but I'm not worried about it. I usually try to stay within three thousandths of an inch of the max trim length. Some people like to go less than that. I say three, maybe four thousandths max. Because um, you know the case is going to stretch again anyway. So what happens after we've trimmed this and gotten this to the right length, the right size? I will show you. What I've got here is I've got a Frankfurt Arsenal wet tumbler. Now, I've got about five of these things. I'm only rocking one right now because there's just over 200 pieces in there for us to go ahead and clean. I'm also using Southern Shine uh, chip media. I'm not using the stainless pins. The stainless pins, they were getting stuck for me. A lot of people complained. Uh, I didn't like them. So now we're over on, on the Southern Shine media. So shout out to those guys. And then what we have is we've got the brass in there mixed with the media, you know. I'll shut that off because like I said, it's annoying, but it'll run for about an hour. Uh, it's usually about six pounds of chips to like 500 pieces of brass. Uh, that seems to be working out very well for me, and I end up using, I'll, I'll show you all my secrets, uh, the cheapest car wax, car wash that you can get. You use probably four or five teaspoons. On top of that, we use some Lemmy Shine. You guys hear it all over the place. And then after that, it comes out looking like this. We have an entire bucket of it that came out a little bit earlier today. And then when it's done, come back over to the bench. It's got to go into a dryer. And once the dryer is all set up and done, we have brass that looks brand new. Hydroformed 7.62 by 39 to 65 Grendel. We've, met, we've loaded this up now to about 2,400 feet per second with powders such as you know, BLC2, Varget, 8208XBR, uh, Benchmark, uh, CFE223. So we, we've had really good results. So that's the process. It started off at about 28 steps, and I've gotten it down to what I just showed you. So I think that's like 9 or 10 steps. But um, that's one of the projects we've been working on. I've wanted to document and send it to you guys. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Or if you're in the Red Eye Reloading Group on Facebook, go ahead and post up a message and I'll be more than happy to answer it for you. So thanks for hanging out.